Number one, in Exodus 23, 20, he will assign an angel to his people. How many need an angel of the Lord? We all have angels, but then there's the angel of the Lord. During certain times where the angel comes in and things begin to shift. How many need that? And this is the season. We're coming into the season of Passover, and then everything shifts. So from here to the next 50 days is 50 days of high angelic activity. I always watch the new connections God gives me between Passover and Pentecost. A lot of times it's new doors, new favor, new people, new nations that come during these 50 days. I'm ex these are the most active 50 days ever. That's why there's a battle in the heavenlies. That's why there's a little bit of stuff in Israel. It's already calmed down, by the way, somewhat since yesterday. So we're excited. How many are coming to Israel with us? We're excited we get to be there at this time. Amen? No fear, you know. Um, number two, God will be an enemy to the enemies of his people. How many need God to be an enemy to your enemy? How many got some enemies right now? It could be, and maybe it's not people, but situations. And then the devil knocks on the door, have Jesus answer it. People are like, oh, I'm sorry, wrong, wrong house. Amen? Sometimes we're trying to fight it on our own strength. Let the Lord in. Amen? King David knew how to do that. Number three, God will give prosperity to his people. How many could use prosperity in this season? Amen? He wants to prosper you because you need it for the days ahead, not just for you and your family, but so you can be a blessing. How many want to be a blessing? That's more fun than just getting your needs met. Helping someone, they're crying, thank you, Jesus. Oh my gosh, God, you used to meet that need. That's the, the best. Would you like to be the rescue team in, in the earthquake in Turkey or be the one needing rescuing? It's more blessed to give, amen? And then it's, uh, he will take sickness away from his people. A lot of people still getting sick. We've had this pandemic thing, but how many want God to take it away? Well, the doctors can't do anything. You tried everything, and God, you wake up one morning, it's just gone. I've seen that happen. How many need just a supernatural miracle where God just begins to come in in a way that, so that's, these are different blessings. The fifth one, he will give long life to his children, verse 26. How many want long life? And maybe you say, well, your grandmother died young, your mom died young, but like, no, not with me. I'm going to live my fullness. I'm not going to let the enemy take me out before my time. We were talking with Cindy and Mike that some of God's greatest generals sometimes got taken out early. There's like a major attack on prophets or apostles or whoever. And, and some lived their full life, like Billy Graham lived, you know, pretty much. But some got taken out and it felt too early. Like, wow, well, how could they? I didn't think they're going to go that fast. They, this guy had plans. He was going to do this for the Lord. The Lord had told them some stuff. So I think that was too early. Because others know it's their time. They're like, you know, I think I've run my race. I'm ready to go. It's not that. How many believing you won't get taken out early? No matter what. Even a 1,000 at your side, 10,000 at your right hand will not come near you. I mean, you're still here. You survived the pandemic, right? You're still here. So, so there's a reason. Amen? And um, number six, God, and then like Cindy said, even if you do die, it's not a punishment. If you're saved, it's, you get your reward. So either way, you win. But try not to die. Try to stay alive as long as possible. Don't just go, oh, yeah, I like what Cindy said. I just, I'm tired of all the problems on the earth and, and the wars and the, the, the pan, CBDCs that are coming. And, oh, forget all that stuff. I'll just, just take me early. No, don't do that either. <laughs> don't do the, say, Lord, make, make it hard to kill. Be like unkillable. Like shipwrecked, Paul, bitten by a serpent, ain't nothing. Stoned to death. The guy wouldn't die. The guy would not die unless God let him. How many want to be so unkillable you cannot die unless God, you and God agree on it? Paul was so close to God, he told Nero, I'll let you know, our people will let your people know what you get to do with me. As he's in prison, just give me more paper and a pen, please, and a little more bread and water, and we'll let you know when you get to do something with me. And he's like, I don't know if I should stay, if I should go. I think it's better I stay for your sake, but I'd rather go to heaven. Like, he, he, like God was letting him pick almost. I want to be so close to God, you get a decision on the timing of your death. If you do die. That's pretty cool. How many, why don't we want to be that close to God where he lets you in, you can have a, a negotiation on it. Like Hezekiah, how about 15 more years? I did restore the feast. I did restore. Okay, you know. How many want to negotiate with God? That's very Jewish, by the way. Sometimes Gentiles go, yes, sir. You're going to die tomorrow. Yes, sir. Jewish people go, oh, let's talk about this. Uh, I, I, okay, wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Well, slow, slow it down. You can be a little more Jewish, amen? Moses, you know, he talked. God's like, I'm going to kill all the Israelites. They messed up. Moses is like, come on, come on. This is bad PR. It doesn't look good. You're, it doesn't look good for the Egyptians that you want to save later. You know, if you're killing your own people, it's, it's not good PR. He was really like, and God thought about it. Okay, I guess you, he loves that. How many want to start negotiating, wrestling with the Lord on certain issues? It's getting quiet in here. Certain things you, can, you can't, but certain things you can't. All right, be a little more Jewish that way. How many would try that? 
And then um, God will give increase and inheritance. So that's different than prosperity. Prosperity is prospering the work of your hands, your business. your And then inheritance, something you didn't work for, it just drops it in your lap. And sudden increase beyond what, beyond, beyond God prospering you. How many want an increase in inheritance? Someone just gave you a church building, a, a ministry center that you didn't even pray for. I wasn't even praying for this place. I mean, we still owe on it, but, I, we, own, but we own it technically. Well, the bank kind of owns it too. But I wasn't praying for this and just kind of dropped in my lap. How many want an inheritance?